Welcome back, uh, it's still Massimo here. Um, in this session, we are gonna cover the STM32H5 Secure Manager, and we are gonna show how to easily install and get started with it. My friend Mina already introduced the Secure Manager. Let's now have a look in more details. So what's in the scope of the Secure Manager impact? The Secure Manager is uh, all what you see in the light blue in this picture, while in yellow, it's the user application. As we have already seen, ST offers a certified dual stage root of trust in dark blue. The ST root, which as we have seen, is the first stage immutable root of trust already installed inside your device when you buy it. This is the primary bootloader in order to ensure the authenticity and integrity of the second stage bootloader. And the ST root, which is the second stage updatable root of trust uh, to ensure the authenticity and integrity of the Secure Manager core, but also of all the other components, such as the Secure Modules and the user application. The Secure Manager includes the Secure Manager core, which is a secure operating system. It handles the security services and it also provides the strong isolation between the different components of this picture, thanks to a full sandboxing mechanism. And finally, the built-in security services, such as firmware update service, to securely update your firmware, secure storage service, to store your own critical data, cryptography service, to process cryptographic algorithms, and attestation service in order to provide a unique identification of an IoT device. All these security services can be accessed by the user application through PSA standard API calls. In terms of security certifications, the Secure Manager targets both CSIP Level 3 and PSA Level 3 certifications with physical attack resistance so that you can really trust this solution and uh, these also offer the foundation to facilitate your own device certification. For instance, IEC 62443 in industrial space. In terms of delivery, the STIROT is already ROMed in the STM32H5 platform and it's immutable so it cannot be modified. The rest of the Secure Manager is delivered as a binary, encrypted and signed by ST and fully securely updatable on the field. It's therefore under the full ownership of ST to maintain this binary certified over the lifetime of the product, which is uh, one of the biggest difference versus using an open source software framework like TFM, for instance. In case of TFM, in fact, the customer is responsible to finalize and integrate its TFM version, update it when there is a new revision, and go each time for the complete certification of the platform, which requires expertise, time, and money. While using it as a certified system on chip solution is really optimized in terms of uh, certification properties, as you can build and rely on this certification to get your own device certification done. If you need to protect critical assets or dedicated IPs in the secure area, it could be either proprietary algorithms or third-party IPs. There is the option to develop secure modules or trusted applications here in green. This could be done either by a third party or by the OEM directly with a full control of the IP's ownership as these security modules are delivered encrypted and signed either by the OEM or the third party to ensure their full confidentiality. In other words, this is a way to ensure strong IPs protections and to enable new business models with the third party IP suppliers. And finally, from the user's point of view, as the security services are handled by the secure manager, developers can simply focus on the non-secure application just as if there would be no security at all, and use the PSA API calls to get access to the security services offered by the Secure Manager, 
without having to handle the complexity of trusted zone and isolation. This non-secure application could then be securely and independently updated and optionally encrypted to ensure its confidentiality. To summarize the key benefits of the Secure Manager solution, it's a, a trusted execution environment operating system. It provides a full turnkey set of built-in security services. It enables multi-tenant software IP protection. It's ARM PSA APIs compliant for interoperability. It's designed and maintained by ST for long-term support. It provides modular secure update capability of each building blocks. It's certified and robust against physical hardware attack, and it's optimized for OEM's device certification. For all these reasons, it protects your IPs and simplifies your security journey. About the Secure Manager configuration and installation flow, the Trusted Package Creator tool, which is part of the STM32 Q programmer installation, allows the generation of an encrypted and signed image containing everything. The Secure Manager binary delivered by EST, the OEMs or third parties IP modules, and of course, the OEMs application and secrets. The OEM can generate its own key to generate this encrypted image with all the building blocks and protect its confidentiality. For installation, the STM32H573 is delivered with the STIROT and the Secure Firmware Installation Service. And then the image is securely installed on the final chip using STM32Q Programmer in order to get a personalized product. Please consider that not only STM32Q Programmer can do this, and uh, our primary partners are in fact also implementing this solution. Optionally, the OEM could use the STM32 HSM hardware security module to protect its encryption key, generate installation licenses, and control the number of devices programmed with its firmware. This is extremely useful when the external manufacturer or the programming location or facility is not trusted. This is the same SFI Secure Firmware Install Mechanism you might be already familiar with because available on other STM32 families. Let's focus now on how to configure, install and get started with the Secure Manager in a few clicks. Even a Virgin STM32H573 device comes with the Secure Firmware Install Service and the STIROT available in the system memory. In this first end zone, to install the Secure Manager, we are going to start from a device in open state, and after installing the Secure Manager, we we'll move the device state in Trust Zone Closed. A default application has been integrated by ST in order to blink the onboard LEDs and to display the software version through the user interface. You already received and have access to the prerequisites, download and installation procedures required for this workshop. If you have followed the instructions, you have already installed the STM32CubeH5 as well as the Xcube Secure Manager and copied the content of the Secure Manager within the STM32CubeH5 folder. You have also installed the STM32Cube ID and the STM32Cube Programmer including the STM32 Trust Package Creator and you have a working terminal application installed, like TerraTerm. If not, you can simply follow the demo. Otherwise, please make sure to go back to the installation procedure document and install the required software. In terms of hardware, for this workshop and zone, you need a STM32H573 discovery kit and a USB Type-C cable to connect the board to your Windows PC. 
there are two USB Type-C connectors on board. Please make sure you connect the USB cable on the CN10 USB ST-Link connector on the right side of the board. Make sure that the SW1 boot zero switch is set to zero, as described in this picture, in order to boot from the user flash. Then connect the STM32H573 Discovery Kit to the Windows PC using the USB Type-C cable. This step must be executed only if you did not install the STM32Cube Programmer tool in the default folder. If this is the case, you need to locate the file env.bat under the workshop folder cube firmware h5 projects stm32 h573 dk rot provisioning then please open this file in edit mode using your favorite editor and make sure the tools installation path STM32 Programmer CLI and STM32 TPC CLI are updated with your custom installation path. At this point, we want to check the status of the device before jumping to the Secure Manager installation steps. Let's open the latest revision of STM32Q Programmer you have installed and connect to the board in ST-Link mode. Once the board has been connected, you should be able to see all the target information, board, device, device ID, flash side, and so on. Now, move to the OB, Option Bytes tab, select Product State, and check that the Product State is open, ED. Next, open the boot configuration, to make sure sec boot lock is set to zero. Now everything is as expected. Do not change anything. And we can disconnect from the board. If you have already used the board for your development and the product is not in open state, you need to run the regression script in order to move the device in open state before installing the Secure Manager. So, only if you need to run the regression because your device is not in open state, please locate the regression.bat file under the Workshop folder Cube Firmware H5 Projects STM32H573 DK Rot provisioning DA and double click on the regression.bat file to move the device in open state. Again, if your device was already in open state, you do not need to execute this step. First of all, we need to locate the Secure Manager provisioning script. Open your workshop folder, STM32 Cube Firmware H5. Projects, STM32H573DK, Rot Provisioning, SM. Two different Secure Manager provisioning scripts are available in this folder. Provisioning and Provisioning Auto. Do not click on any of those for now. Uh, the Provisioning Auto script will simply install the Secure Manager with all the default configurations and keys. If you launch this script, all the steps will be done automatically. This option is mainly useful, I would say, during your evaluation phase if you don't want to deal with configurations and keys customization. On the other hand, the provisioning script executes the same steps, but it stops at every step, allowing you to change and customize the configuration related to that specific step. In this end zone, we are not going to change anything, so we could simply use the provisioning auto script, but I want to show you the more flexible provisioning script execution to give a better understanding of the possible configurations and how to customize those configurations. So let's double click on the 
provisioning.bat. The first configuration step is the general configuration. We are not going to change anything and I'll press any key to continue, but I want to show you your options. So if you want to start customizing things, follow the instructions, open just package creator. You don't have to do that right now. I, I just want to show you how to use it. Then click on H5 OB key and open the SM config general XML file. And you can start to explore and customize. All the different options and what they mean are described in the STM32H5 Secure Manager wiki page. The link is provided in the resources section of this presentation. For instance, you might want to decide if jumping or not into the ST bootloader when no valid Secure Manager or modules and non-secure application is found. To apply your changes, you need to regenerate the new obkey file. Again, we want to keep everything as it is for now. So let's go back to our running script and click any key to continue. The next configuration step is related to the OEM keys. Default keys must not be used in the final product, so you have to regenerate your own keys before releasing your product. Following the instructions, let's go back to Trusted Package Creator and open the smconfigkeys.xml file. You can update the encryption and authentication keys used for the OEM images and regenerate the OB key. But again, we keep everything as it is for now and we go back to our running script and continue. The next configuration step is the other configuration. Same story, open the SM config other file and you have additional options on clock configuration, jump to bootloader if no valid ST you wrote, minimal product state and so on. Again, no changes and back to the script and continue. Next configuration is the debug authentication. Debug authentication will be covered in a dedicated presentation in part five. So I'll skip the details for now and continue with the default configured keys and certificates. Next configuration is related to the option bytes configuration we want to set. We open the SFI Option Bytes tab and we can update the Option Bytes and regenerate a new OB file. Again, no changes for now. It's just to show it. So let's go back and continue. Next is the internal trust storage blob content that we want to add to the Secure Manager installation. The internal trust storage of the Secure Manager can be initialized securely with preloaded keys and data during Secure Manager installation. This feature allows to start the non-secure application execution with keys and or data already provisioned in the device and ready to be used. Let's skip this step for now and continue. The last configuration step is related to the SFI global license. This step is highly recommended for a production use case and it allows to regenerate a SFI global license with new key and nonce. The generated license file will be used then by a STM32Q programmer to install without counting. The tool input is a firmware key file and a nonce file. Let's skip this part for now and continue. Well, we have completed all the configuration steps and the secure installation file is generated. The step two is the installation part. As already presented, please make sure that SW1 boot zero switch is set to position zero and continue. The secure installation starts and after a few seconds, you should be able to see the successful installation message. The board is now correctly configured with the ST Secure Manager. 
you should be able to see the onboard LEDs blinking right now as a result of the successful installation. As already mentioned, the default application installed with the Secure Manager displays the software version through the user interface. So we need to connect our TerraTerm terminal application, select the COM port associated to the ST link, and configure the serial port with the right settings 115, 200, 8 bit data, no parity, and 1 stop bit. Then press the onboard reset button in order to display the Secure Manager and the ST Eurot version. Now let's go back to the STM32 Cube Programmer tool and reconnect to the board. What can we observe? Well, the option byte readout shows that the script has set the device in trust zone closed. This leaves the non secure application open for debug. Also, the user flash at 0x. 8000000 is not accessible as it is a secure zone where the secure manager is installed. And also the user flash at 0806E400 is accessible and this is the location in fact of the non-secure default installed application. We can disconnect now. Well, we have completed our first hands on, and in a few clicks, we have installed the Secure Manager using the provisioning script. Our STM32H573 is now provisioned and in trust zone closed state. Again, this means that the device is still open for non secure application development, as we are going to see in the next part 4 and related hands on session. Not much to add to the resources list described in the previous part 2. I want to just mention that you might find more information on the Secure Manager and on how to get started with it in our Getting Started with STM32H5 Security Wiki pages. Under Getting Started with STM32H5 Security, under How to Start with Secure Manager, you find the three very useful wiki pages. Well then, let's move now to the next session, part four.